Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the analysis of Yulena TV. I hope you're well from wherever you're watching this channel. Now there is something very, very interesting here that is good, that I figure that is good if I share here. And this is actually the main reason why I believe Matakome could be very silent. And even Filemona Amuilu, they are very silent because this is a legal blunder that I believe William Ruto could have committed. I want to take you to this blunder. Perhaps this is the reason why you find that courts have not been direct on this matter. And that's the reason we find that uh, lawyers representing uh, William Ruto wanted that matter to be channeled to another court, not the three judge bench. So talking about this blunder, ladies and gentlemen, hmm. under Article 152, three of the constitution of kenya 2010 a cabinet secretary is required to remain politically neutral and cannot be a member of any political party this provision ensures that cs's focus on the administrative responsibilities without political bias kindiki as the current interior cs is bound by this law and any move to appoint him as deputy president would directly contradict this constitutional requirement and then additionally before assuming any elective office you know the law mandates that a person must have been a political party member for at least three months well there's somewhere I've, i heard that it's about supposed to be six months but before participating in an election and this raises the question of when kindiki currently serving as the interior cs rejoined uda party as he would need to meet this criterion so the absence of public disclosure on this on his rejoining of the party further complicates the legality of his appointment to such a high office now based on only that part i think you now know why people like danson omari are so enthusiastic over this uh, uh, court session and you also probably now understand why lawyers representing William Ruto are not are already showing indication that they are not going to believe or accept the ruling at the High Court. So I want us to go extensively into this because there is already another challenge uh, which is a legal challenge that could be affecting uh, C.S. Kindiki or the Deputy President Designate. So before we get further, please like this video. It's so important if you like this video. I have discovered that so many people forget to like our videos. They forget to subscribe to our channel. Please, if you are not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe to enable us to grow. Thank you so much for that support. Now, I've given you two legal challenges. Now there's another one, which I believe you've heard about. You know, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission responsible for approving candidates for elective positions is currently not fully constituted. As a result, no constitutional authority is in place to declare a vacancy for the deputy president's position or to vet and clear candidates for such an appointment. This omission underscores the procedural errors in the rush to replace the current deputy president. So President Ruto's apparent haste to appoint Kidiki without following proper legal procedures exposed the administration to claims of constitutional violations. It is critical for the process of filling the deputy president's position to adhere to the law, ensuring both transparency and legitimacy. A deviation from these legal processes undermines the integrity of the office and the constitutional framework that governs such appointments. So, based on that article, ladies and gentlemen, I believe you now know why Kindiki has, you know, a lot of challenge before him. Even if people like uh, Member of Parliament, Sudi, people like Sudi, try to tell Kenyans, try to give Kenyans dates that uh, the swearing-in will take place, it's not going to ease, uh, to be possible. You saw an article that was saying that Philomena Mwilu wrote to the state house that she cannot swear in the deputy president. And most and the reason why that she gave there is because if the country burns, she's the one who's going to be blamed. So because she doesn't want to fall prey to that kind of challenge, she 
uh, chose to write to the settlers, and that's why you find that that swearing in never took place. Uh, now, the, the CJ was also not, uh, you know, not available. We've seen so many articles about the missing of the CJ. Recently, she surfaced at, I think, a place in Mombasa. Now, let's get back to this legal challenge. There are three points, key points, which I wanted to note, and I believe some of you know about this. There is the issue of being a party member for at least three months. There's the issue of IBC clearance. The commission is not properly constituted. That's why members of parliament for uh, other... Uh, that's why you find that there are constituencies that still, like Banisa constituency, the member of parliament passed on, no uh, by-election has been conducted simply because the commissioners are not there. So, so, so those two uh, critical points, IBC clearance and uh, being a party member for at least three months. You see, the challenge here is how will Ruto convince people that Kindiki has been a member of UDA? Of course, if he has been a member of UDA, and then why did he serve as a CS when he's a member of UDA? So these are very, very interesting developments, ladies and gentlemen. And, and that's why you find that he case a issue level. Someone will argue that Kwanini, he is CS, na he is a C party member. I mean, he is a party member. How? When? You see, for example, when Mudavadi was appointed as uh, the prime CS, one of the things that she, he was required to do was to relinquish that position. So he did. He relinquished the position. You know? The position was a party leader to NC. So he had to relinquish the position. He had to cease becoming a party member. That's why you find that Governor Tinami is the is the, is the party leader of ANC, but an interim capacity. Now, this side of uh, Keturi Kendiki, That's why I'm looking at this matter from a different side of from the different side of from a different side of the coin, and I can tell that there is a legal challenge ahead of William Bruto, and that explains why lawyers threatened to withdraw from uh, uh, the, 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 the court uh, case, citing uh, challenges and also going to an extent of saying that William Ruto is a president. He cannot be subjected to a civilian case. That was what they say, ladies and gentlemen. So, based on these challenges that I've shared, ladies and gentlemen, do you think there is hope for Kindiki to be sworn in? Personally, I think the legal team needs to convince the courts that they complied. This appointment was suspended. It will be revoked. It will require that CS Kituri Kindiki first resigns as a CS. After resigning as a CS, the next thing is supposed to be is to be a member of UDA. Now he will be a member of UDA for three months. After which he can now be nominated as a deputy president. But until then, there's going to be a problem. But I don't know. I, is it? Are they going to use the previous history? Because prior to him being nominated as a CS, he was a member of UDA. Can we say that they're going to use the old history before him being nominated and argue that at least he was a member for at least three months? Because if UDA was formed somewhere there in, uh, say, March, but officially, uh, probably there in May, May that's when uh, things came out publicly and people started knowing who were the members of UDA. And after that formation, we can say that maybe the courts will argue that Kindiki was a member back then until his resignation as a member of our party. But it says for the last three months, so if for the last three months he has not been a member of UDA, then this explains the legal challenge. You remember during Uru uh, Mugia Kenyatta's tenor, there were CSS who were, who were there, but these CSS had to resign for them to vie for governorship position because it was an elective position. They had to first of all resign first, and the were party members were also Chamazao, Allah for parties or positions. I, rem I think you remember that story that was in 2022 of, of the CSS who resigned. Now, in summary, ladies and gentlemen, Kendiki as a 
very very huge challenge ahead of him ladies and gentlemen so i wanted to go below the comment section and you can offer a reaction regarding this development this reality i call it reality because that is what is happening ladies and gentlemen but perhaps if you're watching this video and you've not subscribed take one second and subscribe like this video until you catch up again stay safe and stay blessed